Now we all have heard of Flash once upon a time in our lives and most recently in CW TV series featuring Grant Gustin as Barry Allen, also known as the second Flash, the first being Jay Garrick. Now before we cut to the chase, we are talking about Barry Allen and Wally West, that is the one in the Justice League Unlimited show. Now Jay Garrick, at his time as the Flash, was the fastest man alive and then Barry Allen was there. Since at that time Jay Garrick was a bit old and thus his speed kind of decreased, Barry Allen thus became the fastest man alive. And then out of nowhere came Kid Flash. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, but still, eventually when Wally West aka Kid Flash took the mantle of the Flash, he got the near speed of sound which is slightly below Marvel's Quicksilver, who was unable to stop those bullets in Age of Ultron. I mean dude, you're a speedster, that's obviously your job. Now this may seem out of context, but Quicksilver's adaptation in the Avengers movie was actually more accurate than the one in X-Men, because well, Quicksilver isn't that fast to even run and you know, see bullets in such a slow. So yeah, as I was saying, Wally West eventually learned about the Speed Force. For those of you who don't know, the Speed Force is an extra dimensional energy force that almost gives every single Flash their powers including Jay, Wally and Barry and many other more Flashes in the future. Or should I say, Speedsters. Now the closest reference for you guys to the Speed Force is in the 2001 series Justice League Unlimited when Wally West ran so fast he entered the Speed Force dimension for the first ever time. On finding out about the Speed Force, Wally apparently reached the number one rank of being the fastest man alive and has ever been till in the future where the Impulse aka Barry Allen's grandson became not only the fastest man alive but the fastest man to have ever lived on planet Earth. I mean, Superman's an alien, you know. I mean, he went back in time when he was theoretically only 3 years old, but since people who can access speed force age faster than the normal human beings, he looks 12 and also gathers knowledge very fast. So yeah, but goes back in time when he was 3 years old and Barry Allen in Flashpoint Paradox when he is in his 20s. However, since Bart Allen is so fast, he kind of is unstable. I know, crazy. But forgive me for straying off topic because I'm going to talk about Wally West and Barry Allen speed because Bart Allen can run as fast as picosecond. One picosecond being 10 raised to minus 12 seconds which is 1 upon 100 quintillion seconds. Oh my god. And that is so fast that Bart Allen will come back to the past like he literally teleported. And yes, he is faster than teleportation itself. Now before I show this depiction, I want to say one thing. Goku fanboys, come at me bro. Now let's picture this, Bart Allen and Goku are on a race. Now as the race starts, Goku uses his instant teleportation. Now Bart Allen is already there before Goku started to teleport, even though Bart hasn't even started moving across the place. And because of this, Bart on traveling on his top speed will become a tack ion forever. Now for those of you who don't know what a tack ion is, a tack ion is something that travels faster than light. And whatever travels faster than light will go back in time. That is, everything will be reversed for whatever Bart Allen is seeing. I mean, even the words we are saying will be And due to this incredible speed, Bart Allen cannot come back to his normal form at all. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, we have to deal with his awesomeness, you know, sometimes. But the reason Barry Allen is the most famous Flash, even though Bart and Wally are more overpowered than him. It's because Barry Allen has the most stable speed and is thus able to control his speed and strength. Because if you're insanely strong like Bart Allen, you can't even walk. Instead, you'd be vibrating so fast, you vibrate through the surface of the Earth. And mostly, since you're vibrating so fast, the Earth's core heat will hardly affect you and you literally travel across the planet. 
I mean, even if he did travel across the planet, maybe his suit would get destroyed by the Earth's heat. But still, that would be kind of crazy. Although Bart Allen never really exits the Speed Force, and even if he does, he's more of an apparition, which is partially still there in the Speed Force, and partially on Earth. Kinda like this. I feel kinda... funny. Flash! Now this of course is Wally West, but after a few seconds he exited the Speed Force successfully, but it's impossible for Bart Allen to do the same as Wally West. But, since Barry Allen is so stable, he's proved to be the best Flash because he can control his strength and speed to fight crime every time. Haha, <laughs> that rhymes so well. So now, the main question. How fast is the Flash? Well now, according to the math I've done, Bart Allen is 1 upon 100 quintillion kilometers per second fast. Now Wally West, now in one story arc, he seemed to be competing against Superman Blue, also known as Electric Superman as his fans like to call him, who never really runs out of solar energy for his powers because the energy is stored inside his suit. Now Superman is 4.2 times faster than the speed of light, but that's only when he doesn't really get solar energy at all times. But then Superman Blue is 10 million times faster than light. Now obviously, Wally West was a winner, and Wally was so fast he was faster than Superman by a minute, not even seconds. I mean, now there were never enough stats to calculate Wally West's speed, but Barry Allen on the other hand with Superman Blue has lost several times. Barry Allen, the second fastest, but his most notable speed is when he saved an entire city of 500,000 people from a nuclear explosion in just 0.0001 seconds. Oh, wait, 0.00001 microseconds, which is 10 raised to minus 11 seconds. That means he was traveling at approximately 2.5 quintillion kilometer per second. That looks slow to Bart Allen speed, but sorry to say it's a way, way slower. But still, that is 9.5 million times faster than the speed of light, so yeah. Now picture this. This is Earth, and this is Alpha Centauri, the closest star to Earth outside the solar system, which is 4.24 light years away. Now let's just round it up to 4 light years away, okay, to make it easier for you non-nerds to figure it out. Now 4 light years means it'll take 4 years for the light produced from Alpha Centauri to reach Earth. Now Flash is 9.4 million times faster than light. If light takes 4 years to reach the star once, then Flash can reach the star and come back 234,999 times back and forth. And not to forget, I had to read that amount from a paper. So yeah, Spitzle Boom never does that really. And in case you didn't figure it out yet, one light year is equal to 9 trillion kilometers. Yeah. So now, that's fast. But you see, Barry Allen can't travel that fast. I mean, he can. But if he did, he directly entered the speed force at about 400,000 kilometers of traveling. So obviously, he can't reach the star because he'll enter another dimension called the speed force. But without the speed force, he would reach the star with ease. Wow. You know, I just realized, why the hell doesn't Star Labs use Flash for space travel? Seriously, all he needs is a big oxygen tank, but that's it. So in the end, Barry Allen, aka The Flash, is approximately 281 trillion kilometers per second fast. There it is. 281 trillion kilometers per second. Damn, boy! Also, if you want me to calculate Jay Garrick's speed, I'm not okay. That's too much calculation for me today. Thank you.